Welcome back to the Hatcher, everyone. Today I'll be showing you footage from our last oyster spawning of this season. Now, oyster spawning occurs a bit different in nature than how we do it in the lab. And when oysters are in their natural environment, their reproductive signal is warmer temperatures, ranging between 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. So now when these water temperatures occur, it causes the oysters to release their gonads into the water, their sex cells, either eggs or sperm into the water column, and that induces the fertilization process. Now in the lab, we're using a technique called strip spawning, and I'll show you how this process goes. Step number one is pretty simple. You just take the hose and you wash off the dirt, the algae, and the worms that tend to be on the oyster shells when you retrieve it from the pier. After that, step number two is an oyster shucking competition. We have some people that have months of experience. We have some rookies that are straight out the gate popping these shells open. And then we have our players that struggle. And I'm going to be on honest with my audience. I am one of those players that have struggled popping these shells open fast enough. But a technique that I learned that your shucking knife, if you look closely at mine, it needs to have a bend at the end part of the blade. Don't tell nobody, I told you. And that's how it's able to pop these shells open a bit more faster. And boom, oyster on the half shell. Next, our mentor, Brittany Wolf Bryant, will be sampling the gonads from each of the oysters. She begins sampling by taking a hollow tube and using it to scoop up the reproductive cells of each of the oysters that we shucked. She takes some of those cells and puts it on a slide. We'll look at this slide under a light microscope, and this will help us determine the gender of the oysters as well as the quality of the reproductive cells. Do the females have a low egg count or a dense amount of eggs? Do the males have actively swimming sperm or non-actively swimming sperm? This data is important for determining which oysters we'll be using for the spawning process. So this is where oyster strip spawning technique comes into play. We will take a scalpel and we'll just scrape out the gonads of the oyster of interest that we would like to use for our spawning. After stripping the cells from the desired oyster, we mix it with some fresh water to begin our next step, the separation technique. So you could be asking what exactly are we separating here? So since the oyster anatomy is quite small, the digestive area and the gonad area are in similar places. So when it's, we're doing the stripping, it is likely that we'll have some algae mixed in that. So we separate by using these sieves. They just have different size netting on the bottom of them. So the larger netting will be on top and smaller at the bottom. So we'll catch the bigger stuff on the top and what exactly we want on the bottom. So we need to make sure that we spray these out real good, wash it off so we get all the cells that we desire and make sure we get everything separated. After all of that, I just pour it right back into the beaker. But before we continue, we have breaking news. We have an intruder in the hatchery that's been stuck here all weekend. We finally caught him. Now it's time to get him out of here. What do you, what do you have to see for yourself to be in the hatchery all weekend? <laughs> So now that we know for sure that we only have reproductive cells, it's time to look at them under the light microscope. So we use it the first time to determine the gender and the amount of eggs and sperm that each of the oysters have. Now we need to determine the estimated count of eggs and sperm inside each of these beakers, as well as the quality of the eggs, the viability of the eggs. After this process, we'll induce our own fertilization inside the lab, simply by mixing the eggs and the sperm together. Now, this is the first stage in the entire life cycle of an oyster. So in a few days, we'll have oyster larvae, and we'll maintain them every other day by measuring them. We're seeing if they're growing to the right size in the right amount of time. We would count them to observe the survival rate as days go by, as well as feed them and check the overall health of the culture because we do want healthy and strong oysters that would make it to the settling process. So I will pass it off to my fellow intern, Kayla McVeigh, who would talk a bit more about what oyster settling is. 
Hey guys, my name is Kayla. Um, I'm currently an intern here at the Pearl Hatchery and I'm making this video because I want Maya to feature me on her YouTube channel. Um, so I'm doing some work today for the hatchery. With me I have a tray of um, oyster shells and on these shells are spat. Those are the little specks there. These are spat from Maryland wild type oysters that we spawned here at the hatchery. Um, Maryland wild type is just if you, it's the naturally occurring um, genetic sequence in oysters. If you pick an eastern oyster up out of the bay or anywhere here in Maryland, it's going to be Maryland wild type, most likely. So these were part of an experiment um, I was part of where we tested how different salinities impact the larval survival and settlement rates. Um, and the experiment has run its course. So today we're going to say goodbye to these spat and shells and they're going to go into Maple Cove here um, and hopefully further the oyster population. So it is a, it's a gorgeous day here on the cove. Lots of spider webs though, which isn't fun. Um, but I have my tray. We have five shells. They all have at least one spat on the shell. Um, some of them have more. There's no really method to how they settle. Um, so this is where they're gonna go. Um, we have some oyster crates and bags here. We also have some on the other side. Clams is just a gorgeous day. So we are going to thank these oysters for their contribution to science. Thank you for furthering the scientific field and bettering the world. And then we're going to say goodbye. Our purpose of oyster spawning in this lab is to not only contribute to the oyster population in the Chesapeake Bay, but also to contribute to research efforts on oysters. So I hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something today. Thank you.